next week's project is going to be a bolster pillow. Some people call them a neck roll. And the, I'm going to be sewing with this nice in, um, interior weight fabric. It's like a drapery fabric. Twall looking um, from, I'm pretty sure Joann's, but I can't guarantee it's a piece I already had. I did get the little neck rolls from Joann's. So the very first thing we're going to do is measure the neck roll so that we know what size pieces we need. So it is, and I'm measuring, the nice thing is this one has a little cover on it, so I'm actually going to measure its cover. And it's 14 inches long. And I'm gonna draw my little bolster here. Like this. It's 14 inches that way. And then if I measure it around, take its waist measurement. Go all the way around, and you don't wanna pull tight, you just want it to, it is 18 and a half. So I'm gonna kind of do a little arrow like this and write 18 and a half. And then this circle is going to be 8 and a half. So the circle at the end is 8 and a half. So that lets me know the finished measurements. Now to everything I'm going to add a quarter inch or a half inch. You know, you get to pick your seam allowance. I usually do for interior stuff half inch seam allowances. So now I'm going to take these measurements and some Taylor's chalk or just a plain pencil and I'm going to draw on the back of my fabric. All right, I've drawn down here a straight edge so I have something more straight of grain to work with. I'm gonna just mark it in blue so you can see it, I have it in pencil. There we go, we're excluding the selvage so this selvage will be cut away and I'm measuring from, it's the nice thing with selvage is it gives us a nice straight line so you can see this line. Here's the width of my pillow. The pillow finishes at 14 with seam allowance. I'm cutting at 15. And the length of the pillow finishes at 18 and a half. So I want to measure up 19 and a half from my bottom line here. And I'm just gonna make a few marks across one side. There we go. Okay, this line. That's our basic pillow piece. And now we have to make two circles. There's a lot of ways you can do the circles. I'm gonna use a scrap like this, a scrap. And we're going to measure onto the scrap our half of nine and a half. So here's nine and a half, which is gonna be four and three quarters. There's four and three quarters. We're gonna make a little mark at four and three quarters. You can use a string, however you wanna do it. And we're going to do the little trick. We wanna make sure we are wide enough to go all the way around. I'm gonna poke my pin down into this board. And we're just going to rotate around making little marks like this. Keep it as straight as you can. A push pin works better than a long skinny pin like I'm using, but as long as it stays in the spot, we're good. And once you get one circle done, you can use it for the pattern for the other circle. So can you see? I fill this in for you. Can you see your circle starting to show up? So we're just gonna keep going around. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and cut out this rectangle and this circle. And because I have three of these pillows, I know I'm gonna make them again. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these fabric patterns onto paper so the next time I go to make a pillow, I'll have the pieces ready for that size pillow. We're ready to go to the sewing machine now. I have my one rectangle, my two circles, 
the bolsters in there. So I'm going to thread up with the right color thread and start putting it together. Now that we're, um, we have our pieces cut out, I'm going to be using a zipper to put mine together so I can take the cover on and off. If you want to make um, lots of covers for holidays, like have a Christmas fabric, a Halloween fabric, an Easter fabric, that sort of thing, putting a zipper in is the best way. Um, you don't have to seam rip anything. You just unzip it, take it out. Also, if it's a pillow, you're actually going to lay on and need to wash it. Make sure you pre-shrink your fabric. But again, a zipper is the best way to do it. So I'm using invisible. I like invisible zippers because it just looks like a seam. And I'm using one that's longer than the length of my pillow or the width of my pillow. So here's my pillow width and here's my zipper. You can see it's just a tiny bit longer, which is great. Um, the other thing that I did before I go to install the zipper, which is the next step, is I went ahead and surged all of my edges on all of my pieces because I am going to be taking this on and off. May have to wash it, I don't know, but I do not want this to fray. And it frays, this um, interior type fabric frays very easily. So everything surged around the edge and now we're ready to install an invisible zipper along the short edge um, of my pillow because that's um, the edge of the pillow that I'm going to be unzipping to take it on off, easy to hide. We are now ready to install our zipper. I'm just sewing with white thread, which is what I also used for the serging. And I have um, already had sort of this peachy pink colored invisible zipper. This is my invisible zipper foot. You definitely want an invisible, a special foot for putting in zippers, whether it's a zipper foot for a regular zipper or an invisible zipper foot for the invisible zipper. It actually has little grooves that the teeth of the zipper fit in. So I have the right side of the zipper down and I have the edge of my zipper, the um, selvage edge really of the zipper, along with the edge of my fabric. And we're just going to sew. I have hung, I, I'm, my zipper is longer, which I want in this case. Um, so I have the edges both hanging off. So that the top of the tape and the end of the tape are both going to hang off. I'm going to do a little back stitch. And this is my um, first pass through. You can actually move your needle position over if you need to get closer, but I think this is going to be perfect. Can you see how nice that? There's my teeth, and when I zip this up, those teeth will just completely disappear and it'll just look like a seam. Okay, there's zipper side one. Completely done. And if I just flip this around and zip it, I only have one side shown, but can you see how nicely that looks? Look how nice that looks. Completely disappears. So now I'm going to come over to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to unzip it right side of zipper to right side of fabric. There we go. So now I'm going to take the right side of this to this. And you want to make sure when you line these up that you have, um, that you don't get off. Like I don't want to do this so that they're not lined up. I want to make sure that they're in the same spot on the zipper. And I can start at either end. For me, I think it's easier to go from top to bottom and then bottom to top just because of the um, excess fabric can hang off to the left. And we're going to just come over here to my zipper foot and do the other side. And whenever you put the zipper into the foot, I always kind of roll the teeth back a little bit so they slide into the groove of the foot. Get it straight. There we go. And the teeth are in and I just want to make sure that I'm lined up nice and even before I start stitching and make sure that I'm not off. Oh, that looks great. Okay. I'm 
there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna flip it around to the right side so it's easy to be seen. The main thing you don't want to do is catch the, um, your thread tails in there and mess up your zipper. And that's how it looks. It looks like a seam. Isn't that pretty? All right, so now I'm ready to work on my little. I'm sitting here editing and I just want to um, insert at this point as I start to work on the little circles that I cut the cut them the wrong size. I just want to reiterate all of the sewing instructions work great if you cut the circles to the correct size. So that's the problem. You'll see me fiddling with this. I'm at cutting out a whole bunch of me just messing with it trying to figure out what's wrong. This 15 minute project took forever because I didn't check my measurements until the very end after I figured it well too late that they were way too big. So the old adage, measure twice, cut once, is 100% right in this case and you can see how frustrating and how much I fiddle with it. Little round circles. So I'm going to take off the zipper foot, go back to a regular foot, and there's lots of ways you can do a circle onto a circle like this. However, I find that it's easiest if I go all the way around with a basting stitch first and I can kind of pull my threads. Because this is a circle, parts of it are biased. So parts of it are gonna to wanna to stretch um, and it can actually make it hard to get your circle into this circle, into this um, evenly. So I'm going to do a basting stitch all the way around on my half inch mark and I'm going to lengthen my stitch here. Remember you don't want to back stitch and see this line right here that's where it was you can actually see the wrinkles it needs pressed out so I need to make sure and give it a good pressing and steaming and then we'll be putting them together. No back stitching when you baste. my basting together. Here's my little tails and you can see it almost meets but not quite. So now I have this that I can put into this and we're again doing right sides together so the best thing to do is to flip this around. Now because of how I did my zipper, here's my little zipper head up here at the top. I'm going to unzip it a little bit. If you don't want to, if your zipper is really long, your zipper head may be up here. If you sew past your zipper head you could actually lose it and then your zipper is no longer functional. So you want to unzip your zipper um, when you get ready to do that side. I'm going to start at the tail end though and find my little tails on this and we're going to line them up and we're working this outer edge is bigger so we're going to have little ruffly type things along there. I'm going to just put a pin in here come across about half we're going to fold this in half so I can keep track half and half remember that whole you quarter everything when you sew and you can see how big my circle looks right now compared to this and that's why I have these little gather stitches it's going to make it go in a lot easier it'll make sure that I get it in nice and even and the basting stitches are going to help us. It's like putting a sleeve in, like putting a fitted sleeve into an arm's eye. It sort of works the same way. Now I'm going to pull my basting stitches from this side to help ease in this fullness. And I'm actually pulling in more than I need to start with and then we'll Loosen it back up. All right. And then for this project, I'm actually just sewing with stuff I already had. So I already had the zipper. I already had the fabric. The one th and the only thing I purchased were my little bolsters. All right. So now you can kind of see my little gathers. So I'm going to go ahead and just pin and move my gathers around. And when I'm ready to um, sew it, I'll show you. All right. We're ready to sew again. I've got both things um, basted so 
I don't have to uh, worry about my stitch length anymore. And I have reset my machine back to the regular stitch length. Now you can sew with either side up, either with the circle side up or with the straight side up. It doesn't really matter. Other than if you put the circle side down, the feed dogs of the machine will help um, ease in a little bit uh, the excess fabric because it does seem to be a little full, which is just the, the nature of sewing in a circle to a tube like this. The way I'm gonna start at the zipper. This is a nylon zipper, not a metal zipper. You can sew through the nylon zipper. It is. All right, so you can sew right over that, but don't sew over your pins. And I, again, I, I set for my project half inch seam allowances. I am gonna backstitch before I hit that zipper. I always sink my needle when I readjust my fabric and that just prevents me from accidentally pulling the whole piece out. I can feel a buckle right there. There we go. Let's... All right. I'm gonna check it before I take off any of those extra threads in case I need to pick something out and smooth it out. That's what it looks like on that side. Let's switch it around. There it is, there it is. Okay, so I have quite a few little gathers. Can you see that? Look at that, bloop, there we go. Here's my seam, there's my gather. So I'm gonna grab my pillow, I'm gonna stick it inside to see. And I'm not loving it. And I'm thinking I want to actually make my circle smaller. It's not horrid, it's not horrible. It's actually kind of cute, but it kind of has a little bit of a muffin-y top to it. Don't love it. Okay, this one, it's just not working, which, and right next to it, I'm gonna do another gathering line. All right, gathering line number two, we're gonna test it on this side that I haven't sewn yet and see if I want to take off a full half inch. I may rip out this side on this one and take it in a half inch because I'm not loving the muffin top look. So I ripped it apart. We're beginning again. I've um, done new basting lines. So here's my original half inch and then I'm in about another half inch from that. I don't know why, but this is always the case. So I'm going to go down to my second basting line and I'm going the, which is going to be offset now. So that line is going to be at my half inch mark in here, which I know is confusing. So I'm gonna actually have some excess hanging out some excess hanging off of my circle. I'm gonna do the quartering thing. Actually, before I even put it on there, I'm gonna go ahead and put pins on my corners. Make my life easy. Do it before it's on the circle. You know? There we go. Okay, here's my quarters on my end. And now I'm gonna do the quarters on this. Well, one quarter is going to be at the zipper. And then I'm gonna go straight across from the zipper. Oops, picked up a hair, a thread. And now we're gonna put those on top of each other. That's quartered. If you want to, if you're, let's say you're making a whole bunch of these at the same time, do all your basting at once, do all, do all your zippers, then do all your basting, then do all the quartering. So you're kind of assembly lining it, it really will save you time. That's a, um, a good way to cut down on your time on your project. Now I'm gonna, again, I'm doing this on the side that the zipper's closed on the end of the zipper. Here's my, Here's my stitching line when I pin around, and I hope this one is going to be right. Whoops. On this second side, I decided to pull up any excess till I got it nice and smooth, and I didn't have any of this um, fiddly bit muffin top stuff happening. So I'm gonna flip this around to the right side so I can show you the difference between the two. And here we go. 
So this is the side where I just kept pulling out until I got all of the um, fullness out. And look at how nice and flat and smooth that is. I like it so much better. Okay, and then here's the other side. Don't like that. It's got a little hat on it. So I'm gonna take this side off. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to keep pulling out. And I will tell you that I pulled out if I flip it around so you can see, look at how much, look at the seam allowance on that thing. Can you see that? I'll probably come back and surge off a bunch of that, but it won't show. So if I let it just crumple up on the inside like this, no one would know the difference anyway, but I, I haven't decided. Um, this side, I can go ahead and give it a haircut though and get rid of my ex extra threads. I'm going to seam rip this one, do the same thing on this side. All I can say is my measurements didn't work out. And this is part of sewing is being willing to um, cut it apart and keep trying. I'm actually, while I'm sitting here, let me find my a tape measure. I'm gonna remeasure this. I'm, I'm just wondering if I just measured wrong. It seems like I must have. And I'm sure I did actually now that I come to this. One, two, three, four, five six and a half i wrote down eight and a half well no wonder okay i'll remake my pattern with the smaller circle no wonder this isn't working though i just measured wrong i said i wrote down eight and a half and it should have been six and a half duh no wonder it's not working okay ripping it out starting again Hooray. Much, 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 much better. All right, let's stuff this pillow in and see how it looks. One nice thing about having the zipper in it is it makes this part of the process super easy. And there we go, we have a little bolster. Yay, isn't that cute? That's gonna look adorable on my bed. I'll take a picture of it. You still need to do a little, a few little trims of threads. I have a thread sticking out there and I haven't pressed it at all, so I might give it a little steaming. But super cute, super happy. One of my favorite colors. There's my bolster. Mistakes and all.